We're going to be talking about global growth and economic challenges, as well as this rare metal that has beaten Bitcoin this year. That's right. Bitcoin is not the top performing asset if you consider these metals that have performed very well, that have flown under the radar. Jeff Christian joins us today. He is a managing partner of CPM Group. Jeff, welcome back to the show. It's always good to be here. I like to start by talking about iridium. This is a metal that we haven't discussed very much on the show. Actually, not at all. This is my first time. Um, so uh, it's, it's an honor to discuss this with you today. Let's take a look at this chart. So Iridium has rallied more than Bitcoin this year. It's gone up from about $2,000 an ounce starting from the start of the year to $6,000 an ounce. So that's a growth of three times, which is more than Bitcoin's growth year to date. Uh, first of all, what is Iridium? And uh, second, you have projected Iridium's price growth a couple of years ago. Why don't you show us this chart? Okay. Yeah, we, we produced this report. And the title was the unsustainability of ruthenium and iridium demand. Uh, and that uh, 2019, we, we produced this. And, you know, our projections were $6,200 uh, on an annual average basis for iridium prices uh, at some point during this decade. And we're basically there already. And yeah. frankly, I think the price will go higher than what we had said there. To answer your first question, iridium is a metal. It's one of the platinoids. It's one of the six metals that's called platinum group metals. It is a, an extremely hard metal and it's extremely anti-corrosive. Platinum iridium alloys used to be and probably still are the strongest alloys ever invented by people. And uh, platinum iridium alloys are used in a variety of places. For example, glass manufacturing, uh, where they used to use platinum rhodium, they shifted to platinum iridium uh, because rhodium prices are even higher and, and, and rhodium is scarce. Uh, iridium is used in a number of applications. It's used in crucibles that are used to make, uh, to grow crystals that are used in a variety of applications, including LED lighting mm -hmm. uh, and LED screens. So, and LED screens are everywhere now, you know, from cars to your televisions, to your cell phones, to your computers, to your, to your refrigerators. You know, so iridium is used in the crucibles that are used to grow these crystals that are used in LED. And, and, and it's used there because you can have molten chemicals that don't get contaminated by the iridium. Uh, so it's, it's, an, it's a metal that is useful. You know, we have <clears throat> at times invested in Iridium for our clients. We have a policy with our clients that if an uh, institutional investor comes to us and says, I'm interested in ruthenium or cobalt or any non-exchange traded metal. And, and um, if they're interested in, in it because they're looking at a mining company, we'll advise them. But <clears throat> with the, the, in the case of Iridium, there's no mining companies that produce iridium per se. They're all, it's all byproduct of platinum, palladium, and, and nickel. And, and so if you're going to invest in this, you're going to invest in the metal. And our, our policy is that we'll only work with institutional investors on talking to them about iridium or other non-exchange traded metals if they allow us to manage any positions they take. And the reason is it's very easy to buy iridium it is very difficult to sell it. And, you know, uh, when you're buying it as an institutional investor or an outsider to the core market, and the core market only consists of a few dozen companies that either produce it, refine it, make it into fabricated products, or actually use it in fabricated products. Um, if you're an outsider and you want to buy it, someone will sell it to you. But when it comes time to, to sell it back, what you'll find is oftentimes a hundred percent spread between the bid and the ask price because uh, they know that you've got it and you want to sell it. Okay. So when you say buy it, you're talking about physical ir iridium from the ground, like an ore. Yeah. There's, there are no futures. There are no options in iridium. You, right, you have to yeah. buy the physical metal. So it's difficult to actually be exposed to this product because like you said, you can't, it's not very liquid. You can't really sell it very easily. Hey, exactly. 
I mean, right. we've seen this with platinum, uh, or not with platinum, we've seen it with rhodium, we've seen it with ruthenium, we've seen it with cobalt, we've seen it with uh, iridium. You know, as I said, you know, when it comes time to sell it, wow. the, 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 the price at which you can sell it back is often half of what the listed price is. Well, that's, uh, that's disheartening to hear because I'm going to go back to this chart. That looks like a great chart, Jeff. That looks like something I would have wanted to partake in. Of course, I missed it. Of course, most people watching this probably did. And if you can't, you can't really partake in it directly anyway. Uh, why has the price ro risen significantly in just the past couple of months? You mentioned the applications, LEDs, LED lighting, glass manufacturing mm -hmm. as well. Have any of these industrial applications really taken off in the last couple of months? No, no, no. The, the demand growth has been over several years, you know, maybe a right. decade or longer. And it, the market has been increasingly tighter. You know, no one is going to increase their, their PGM output to get at the iridium. So you have had, you had decades where iridium wasn't used that much and it wasn't even recycled necessarily or refined from the final product. You would recover the the copper, the nickel, the, if there was chrome, you'd recover the platinum, palladium, and then the rhodium. And sometimes you would leave the iridium in tank house slimes, in drums. And, and over the last 20 years, as iridium demand has picked up, refiners and, and producers have gone back and they've been processing that material. And, and there's not that much material left. So as a result, you've seen the price rise sharply really over the last several years. And the increase in the last few months is just on top of that. But what you've got is an iridium market where you don't have necessarily current production sufficient to meet current fabrication demand. And so you've been drawing down inventories and you're getting to a point where the inventories are extremely low. And somebody comes in and says, I need some. And it's not necessarily there. You've had some refining problems in South Africa. A couple of refineries have had some problems, which has caused hiccups in the flow of refined, newly refined metal coming into the market. But you're also at a point where there just doesn't seem to be as much inventories left uh, as fabricators want and need. Now, one of the things that's happened over the first quarter of this year is new factories are coming in because LEDs are growing by leaps and bounds. So you have new factories that come up and there's two, two levels of fabrication demand. There's, I'm, I'm starting a new factory. I need the iridium crucibles to start it. And then once you've started it, you have a recycling. You know, you use the crucibles, you recycle them. So you, you have an ongoing need to top off your iridium inventories, but your big in iridium inventories purchase is when you start the metal. Uh, start the start the, the the factory, and and you've had a little bit of that going on in the first quarter of this year, as well as a little bit of restarting uh, as the global economy recovers. Okay, one more question on iridium. Uh, can you go back to your report, please? Can you just hold up the title? I'd like to see the title again. What does that say? The unsustainability of iridium and ruthenium demand. Okay, what does that mean? It means that there's just not enough supply around. It is very okay. funny because I was talking to somebody the other day and they were talking about... Uh, you wrote this two years ago, for, right? You wrote oh, that report was, a couple years me? ago. You wrote this report a couple years ago, right? Yeah. Well, we, we do it uh, as needed. So yeah, this was August of 2019 yeah, uh, was the, the last the, time that we updated it. Uh, and we, we've been writing about Iridium since 1979. Right. Yeah. Well, do the fundamentals uh, still apply uh, back when you wrote yes. this report in 2019? It's still applicable today? Okay. It's the exact same place. You know, we're exactly where we are. But, you All know, right. the, the interesting thing is that, you know, people talk about su surpluses and deficits in markets. And if there's a deficit, there has to be stocks to meet that deficit. So you've seen some numbers in rhodium recently where somebody said, oh, you know, there's going to be gigantic deficits uh, for the next 10 years in rhodium. And you look at it and you say, well, you're talking about 500,000 or, you know, uh, enormous amounts of rhodium deficits over the next five years. And there's just that, not that much rhodium there. And the same is true with iridium. There's just not that much iridium there. So when you start looking at projected deficits that are larger than the remaining stocks and newly refined supply coming out of the ground, you say, okay, that demand level is unsustainable. 
how do you get the market to the, a balance? And the answer is you find substitutes for iridium in right. some applications. Right. So the price could possibly rise even further based on what you said, unless you find and a substitute right away. We expect the price to rise for the next several years because it's got to be resolved. And, you know, one of the biggest hunks of nonsense that you hear across metals markets, you see it in the rare earth market. Oh, well, these metals are irreplaceable in some applications. Right. So in the case of rare earths, you know, there are certain magnets that are used in motors that use rare earths. And they say, well, you know, you have to have that rare earth to have that metal. Uh, you have to have that rare earth to have that motor. And so it's not substitutable. But the motor is substitutable. So, yeah. you know, you see stuff like that. You know, you can't have deficits if you don't have above ground stocks. And okay. gold and silver and platinum and palladium are radically different from any other metal in that you have large above ground stocks because of their monetary and financial nature. 